The Massacre of Mai Lai The Mai Lai Massacre, which occurred on March 16, 1968, during the Vietnam War, stands out as one of the most horrifying incidents of violence. In this tragic event, a company of American soldiers mercilessly killed numerous inhabitants of the village of Mai Lai, including women, children, and elderly individuals. The death toll exceeded 500, and the victims included young girls and women who faced sexual assault, mutilation, and murder. The shocking part was that the U.S. Army officers concealed this carnage for an entire year until it was eventually exposed in the American media, leading to widespread international outrage. Charlie Company Operating in the small village of Mai Lai, situated in Quang Gai province, which was considered a stronghold of the Communist National Liberation Front NLF, or Viet Cong BC, during the Vietnam War. In March of 1968, Charlie Company, a unit belonging to the American Division's 11th Infantry Brigade, received information that VC guerrillas had seized control of the nearby village of Sun Mai. Consequently, on March 16, they were deployed to the area with a search-and-destroy mission. Charlie Company had already suffered the loss of approximately 28 of its members due to fatalities or injuries, leaving them with just over 100 men. Lieutenant William Kelly The leader of Charlie Company, Kelly, had been informed by army commanders that anyone encountered in the Sun Mai area could be regarded as Viet Cong or active sympathizers, and he was instructed to obliterate the village. However, upon their arrival in the early morning, Lt. William Calley and his soldiers discovered no Viet Cong presence. Instead, they encountered a peaceful village consisting mostly of women, children, and elderly men who were engaged in preparing their morning rice. The soldiers herded the villagers into groups while inspecting their huts. Despite finding only a few weapons, Kali gave the order to begin shooting the defenseless villagers. The Mai Lai Massacre Begins Within seconds, the atrocity commenced, with Kali himself firing upon numerous men, women, and children. Mothers attempting to protect their children were shot down, and even the fleeing children were brutally killed. The soldiers set huts on fire and mercilessly gunned down anyone attempting to escape. Sergeant Michael Bernhardt, a soldier present during the event, later recounted to a reporter, I saw them shoot an M79, grenade launcher, into a group of people who were still alive. They were shooting women and children just like anybody else. We had no casualties. It was just like any other Vietnamese village, old Papa Sans, men, women, and kids. As a matter of fact, I don't remember seeing one military-age male in the entire place, dead or alive. Apart from killing unarmed men, women, and children, the soldiers also slaughtered numerous livestock, committed rapes against unknown women, and razed the entire village to the ground. Kali was accused of dragging dozens of people, including young children, into a ditch before using a machine gun to execute them. Strikingly, not a single shot was fired against the men of Charlie Company at my lot. Hugh Thompson According to reports, the Mai Lai massacre came to a halt thanks to warrant officer Hugh Thompson, an army helicopter pilot on a reconnaissance mission. He intervened by landing his aircraft between the attacking soldiers and the retreating villagers, warning that he would open fire if they persisted in their assaults.
In a 1994 My Lai conference at Tulane University, Thompson shared, We kept flying back and forth, and it didn't take very long until we started noticing the large number of bodies everywhere. Everywhere we'd look, we'd see bodies. These were infants, two, three, four, five-year-olds, women, very old men, no draft age people whatsoever. Thompson and his crew provided aid to numerous survivors by flying them to receive medical care. Investigating My Lai The My Lai massacre concluded with a devastating death toll of 504 individuals. Tragically, this included 182 women, among whom 17 were pregnant, and 173 children, including 56 infants. Anticipating the scandal that would erupt due to the heinous act, senior officers responsible for overseeing Charlie Company and the 11th Brigade immediately took measures to minimize the extent of the carnage. Despite their efforts, the U.S. Army initiated an internal investigation into the incident. The cover-up The concealment of the My Lai massacre persisted until Ron Reidenauer, a soldier in the 11th Brigade who had been informed about the massacre but was not involved, initiated a crusade to expose the truth. Despite writing letters to President Richard M. Nixon, the Pentagon, State Department, Joint Chiefs of Staff, and various congressmen, Reidenauer received no response. Subsequently, he decided to share his knowledge with investigative journalist Seymour Hirsch, who eventually broke the story in November 1969. The Trial of My Lie Following Reidenauer's disclosures, there was an international outcry and a surge of Vietnam War protests. In response, the U.S. Army commissioned a special investigation into the My Lai massacre and the attempts made to conceal it. Subsequently, the My Lai trial commenced on November 17, 1970. The Army ultimately pressed charges against only 14 men, including Cali, Captain Ernest Medina, and Colonel Oran Henderson, in connection with the events at My Lai. All but Cali were acquitted. However, Cali was found guilty of premeditated murder for ordering the shootings, despite his claim that he was merely following orders from Captain Medina, his commanding officer. In March 1971, Cali received a life sentence for his role in orchestrating the killings at My Lai. He was eventually paroled in 1974. Further investigations have since revealed that the massacre at My Lai was not an isolated occurrence. The Impacts During the early 1970s, the American involvement in the Vietnam War was gradually decreasing as the Nixon administration pursued its Vietnamization policy. This strategy involved troop withdrawals and the transfer of ground operations control to the South Vietnamese. Among the remaining American troops in Vietnam, morale was severely low, and feelings of anger and frustration were widespread. The revelations of the My Lai massacre added to the already diminished morale, as soldiers began to wonder what other brutalities their superiors might be hiding. Back in the United States, the My Lai atrocity and the efforts made by higher-ranking officers to suppress it further fueled anti-war sentiment and intensified bitterness toward the U.S. military's presence in Vietnam. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.